Okay, so here we are in SketchUp. I've got a box bottom here. It's also the box top. And then three examples of the sides of the box. As you can see, each one is a different uh, height. So this is a smaller box, medium, and this is a larger. Further, my larger example here, uh, I can uh, highlight it and then get the resize tool and make different sizes of boxes and uh, it'll snap onto these uh, centimeter wide guidelines here. I can make whatever box size I want. So this is a scalable box. So now I'm going to show how to how to how this box can be made in SketchUp. So let's make this piece first. So I made a decision of the length and the width of the box and of course the height will be scalable. So I believe this one is three and a half wide, so I'm going to make one right here. So the first step is uh, to make a line that runs along the width. So uh, with the pencil tool, I'm just typing three now. Oops. I'm in inches, so this typing three makes a three inch line. Oh, 3.5. There. And then to get the, uh, the length of the box, I'll just put in 12.5. Now, to get the uh, to complete the uh, rectangle, you want to hover up here, and then it'll now snap. Triple click to highlight. I'm going to move it up just a bit so it's not crossing the axis. It doesn't look nice. Okay, so to make the flanges, uh, I'll first make guides. So we'll decide we'll do a three-quarter inch flange. This is for gluing. 0.75. There's our three quarter. Point seven. Well, three over four. There. And also, we have to decide how tapered we want it. It's a bit of a taper there. It doesn't have to be tapered. I decided to taper it, so I'll just put in some kind of a guide here, maybe 0.5 inches. And then another one up here, 0. 0.5 yeah. inches. Wow. 0. 0.5 inches. Now we draw the lines. And you don't usually get a fire line when you're making the box, but we got one somehow. There. So there's your rough uh, dimensions for your box. Um, these little uh, in, uh, features here, those are for um, clamping. After the bottom or top is uh, placed, glued in place, you can stick a reversed clothes pin into this spot here to clamp the thing. That's a very fast way for assembly. So those are just little rectangles. So you could just draw, get in close here and make a little rectangle to get those in place. Now you, you'd have to experiment based on the clamps that you have and then of course we could copy those uh, get in close again. Double click then just using the move tool it's pretty easy to uh, make another one over here. Just to press control notice if you press it it alternates and uh, do the same thing to get the lower. Um, so that's the top and bottom. Let's have a look at the sides. So we now know the width and the length. So this is a three and a half by twelve and a half along this axis. So to make one of these, we're going to use that same measurement here, three and a half and twelve and a half across here. So it's just a matter of making the line. So we're going to do let's do the height. Uh, we'll, so we can make up a height right now. This could be a say uh, five centimeters, whatever number you want. Now, next uh, to go to draw, we have to do the three point five has to match three point five. Then, uh, well, let's see here. We'll try to snap this to here, there, and now we're doing our length, which was twelve and a half. 
And we'll complete the rest of the lines here. So we'll have the, uh, whoops, there's a guideline there that's uh, causing trouble. I'm just going to get rid of it. Well, maybe it's not so troublesome. Let's align to it. Just moving on to it. Because I can use this uh, in a minute here. I can use this to make my um, my little flange for gluing, which is going to be down at the bottom. Okay, back to drawing lines. So we're going to draw from here to here. And from here to here. So those are, that's the part. Next, we just need a flange. So we'll just uh, draw out a flange. You could put guides if you want, but I'll just guess. And if the box is wide enough, or I should say tall enough, you may want to put a clamp in here. We're a little narrow right now. Uh, you can see here, uh, we're even narrow, more narrow than this one. But uh, just use the same technique. You just draw in a clamp uh, position there if you want. Uh, there's one more thing. Uh, based on, Depending on the thickness of your cardboard, one action you may want to take is this. Uh, you want to add the width of your cardboard right here. So I'm highlighting the right-hand side of the top. And I go get the Move tool. And let's say my cardboard is thin. Then I'm going to pull this out. Okay, see how I'm pulling that out? But I'm punching in 1 over 8, which is roughly the width of the cardboard. This is because when, the, when you make these fold lines, it doesn't necessarily... Uh, fold at the line and there's and the cardboard adds uh, thickness so you need to fold out a little further so uh, so there you have it okay I designed this in SketchUp because I like SketchUp uh, there's a good path out of SketchUp to a CNC rotary cutter that I've been using I use the flat boys plugin and from there I can uh, export each of these objects to the uh, cutter Today I'm going to use a laser. I'm going to use a Zing laser, and it needs uh, these objects to be in a printable format. SketchUp's not very good at printing, so I'm going to export. I have installed here this little plugin. Uh, it says SVG. It's called Flight of Ideas. So I double click on the object. I should say triple click. Then to export that object, <clears throat> you come to this uh, plugin, Flight of Ideas. You choose the uh, the name um, of what you're going to save it save it as. We'll call this with scalable box side very small there. Uh, then you choose colors here. I've got here uh, outside lines of faces. Uh, let's put those as red, sort of red, a hot color. We're going to cut there. Export lines dissecting faces. Those are the uh, folds, so we'll put those as uh, green uh, lines on faces and so forth. Uh, we don't have those, so we'll leave those as black. So they're exported, but they're black. Also, it's worth changing this to inches and all, 0, 0, 001. The Epilog Zing Laser likes to have the lines one thousandths of an inch, so I say OK. The file's now exported. So I'll just run over to uh, Inkscape here. And uh, from there, we can go and get the file that we um, just created. There it is. So I'll just take this file and uh, drop it on Inkscape. There it is. Now, um, so uh, in here, you can barely see it because uh, the lines are very thin at 1,000. So you can see there are different colors. There's a green in there and then there's red around the outside. Um, if you want to reassign different power levels for the laser, a lot of, a lot of power here for cutting, less power here to just score the surface for folding. You may want to right click, uh, break this thing apart. Oh, sorry. Uh, instead, uh, object, uh, ungroup. So you can, it's easier than to select the individual lines, um, when you want to, uh, use object fill and stroke. And then here you can change the color. Of uh, lines and make sure you have, uh, you know, verify you've got one thousandths of an inch and so forth uh, on there. 
It's also a good idea to uh, do file document properties and make sure that the dot the border the sort of page size matches your document size. So I'm just switching this to uh, inches here, then resize, resize. Um, I think I'm waiting for that. There, there it goes. Okay, so we, I, we've got this uh, document 16.5 by uh, 1.97 in this case. Uh, so uh, you want to round this stuff up usually. To, uh, go up by one tenth of an inch. It guarantees that you have space. But you get easier numbers to remember, so that'll just be 2.0. So there's my document size. Keep this window up here and go out here and save as. Uh, save your uh, file. Um, in the right uh, project directory, that is. Um, uh, this is a squirrel box, um, I'm calling it. Squirrel box shipping, there it is. Uh, so we're going to save this thing. I was calling it small here before. Uh, but we're going to save it as a PDF because you can load that on almost any machine. And uh, right in the file name, I want to put in the dimensions 16.6 .6 and 2.0. So let's put that in. 16 P6 by 2 P0, and then dot PDF in this case, or whatever you're going to use for sending the job to the uh, laser. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> SketchUp is uh, bad for printing, so I have this extra layer here just because a printer, uh, when you print the PDF, it prints cleanly on the laser. When you print directly from SketchUp, it acts funny. Uh, so we save that. So now when we load the file on the printer, the file name contains the dimensions that are, that uh, you put in. I, I said printer, I meant cutter. Uh, so we now know the dimensions of the file. Uh, so you should be able to load this PDF up on your um, laser uh, computer and then print it on the, the laser cutter and out comes your box.